This is a revision video for P5e, waves through the atmosphere, the ionosphere and diffraction. You have learnt before about the electromagnetic spectrum. It's made up of a range of different types of electromagnetic waves, ranging from gamma rays here at the short wavelength high energy end to radio waves at the long wavelength low energy range. Unlike other waves, electromagnetic waves do not need a medium like air or water to travel through and they can travel through a vacuum like space. This is how light and infrared waves reach the earth from the sun. If electromagnetic waves could not travel through a vacuum, there would be no way to receive energy from the sun and life on earth would not exist. We have already learnt how parts of the atmosphere protect us from high energy ultraviolet radiation from the sun. This thin layer of air surrounding our planet is essential for life. It acts like a shield, not only protecting us from the ultraviolet, but also stopping higher energy parts of the electromagnetic spectrum, such as X-rays and gamma rays, from reaching the surface. Only certain frequencies of electromagnetic waves can pass through our atmosphere. These are the microwaves, the infrared, the visible, and only some of the ultraviolet. Radio waves are blocked depending on their frequency and the high energy waves like x-rays and gamma rays are blocked as well. As only some electromagnetic waves are able to pass through our atmosphere, some of them are absorbed by one of the many gases, others by water droplets. Whether an electromagnetic wave passes through depends on its wavelength and on its frequency. If you don't have cable TV at home, then the pictures you receive are all beamed through the air. The TV signal might consist of microwaves sent from your local transmitter. This is called a terrestrial TV signal. These waves travel at the speed of light through the air and are received by your TV aerial. For the best quality image, your aerial needs to be pointing towards the transmitter. Satellite TV works in a similar way, but there's one crucial difference. Instead of the TV signal being sent from a transmitter tower to your aerial, the signal is beamed down from a satellite in orbit. For this, high frequency microwaves are used. They have a shorter wavelength than normal TV signals. To receive a signal from a satellite, you need a satellite dish. A normal TV aerial is not sensitive enough to pick up the signal. The satellite dish has to be very carefully aligned. A few millimetres out and it won't be able to pick up the signal. All signals sent to and from satellites are digital. This allows the signal to be processed by computers and any interference can be removed. But can you remember what the difference between a digital and an analogue signal is? In a digital signal, the signal is sent as a series of pulses and with the satellites it's a series of microwave pulses. They are relatively low frequency and used to communicate with the nearby satellites. To, uh, to communicate with satellites much further away, higher frequency microwaves are used. Satellites that transmit satellite TV signals are in geostationary orbit. They beam the signal from a height of over 30,000 kilometres from the Earth's surface. They are in a fixed spot above the surface, so you can bounce the signal around the Earth by relaying it from one satellite to the next. In a satellite communication network, the signal is beamed up to a satellite, and then that satellite retransmits to the next one, to the next one, and so on. Then the last satellite transmits to receive it on the ground. Some networks can have up to 30 satellites to relay the signal. So why does a satellite dish need careful alignment? Well, microwaves have a shorter wavelength than radio waves. As a result, they don't spread out or diffract as much as radio waves. This is the reason the dishes need such careful alignment. The microwave beam travels in a straight line, not spreading out very much at all. The dish needs to be precisely the correct angle to reflect the signal onto the receiver. 
To increase the quality of the signal, you can use a dish that is much bigger than the wavelength of the microwaves used. This dish then reflects all the signal to the central receiver, which passes it onto your TV. Okay, so now you can stop the video and have a go at these graded questions about waves through the atmosphere. Our atmosphere is made up of several different layers. Each layer has different properties. One of these layers is called the ionosphere. It is very important for longer range communications. The ionosphere is at a height of around 400 kilometers from the surface. It's unusual as it contains a large number of ionized gases. Radio waves are part of the electromagnetic spectrum. They have the longest wavelength and the lowest frequency. When radio waves approach the ionosphere, they are reflected back from it, like light reflecting back from a mirror. Radio waves with a frequency lower than 30 million hertz, or 30 megahertz, are reflected back towards the Earth. Some higher frequency electromagnetic waves, such as microwaves, are able to pass through the ionosphere unaffected. It's not just low frequencies that meet obstacles. Higher frequency microwaves above 30 gigahertz or 30,000 megahertz also have difficulty passing through the atmosphere. They are scattered and absorbed by dust and rain. This reduces the signal strength and results in poor quality communication over long distances. The problems caused by the ionosphere and the dust, rain and other particles in the atmosphere limit the radio waves and microwaves that can pass all the way through it. Waves between 30 MHz and 30 GHz are able to pass through all parts of the atmosphere. This makes them very valuable for communication. Information is sent in most longer wavelength radio waves by a technique called amplitude modulation, or AM for short. The amplitude of the carrier radio waves is changed according to the amplitude of the original signal. The information is encoded in the height of the wave transmitted. Long wavelength radio waves carry information by changing the amplitude of the carrier radio waves. As radio waves are a type of wave, they can experience diffraction. You might remember that waves spread out whenever they pass through a gap or around an obstacle and this is called diffraction. In general, the smaller the gap, or the longer the wavelength, the stronger the diffraction. Waves with longer wavelengths passing through small gaps spread out more than waves with shorter wavelengths passing through wider gaps. As a plane wave front goes through a single small gap, it turns into a circular wave front. If the gap is larger, then only the edges of the wave front are circular. Diffraction is not always a bad thing. Radio waves diffract over hills and between buildings, allowing you to pick up signals. Longer wavelength radio signals diffract more than shorter wavelength microwaves. In general, the strongest diffraction occurs when the wavelength of the wave is the same size as the gap it passes through. Waves with a longer wavelength diffract more. Radio waves have a longer wavelength than microwaves so they diffract more over hills and between buildings, allowing the signal to travel further. Some radio waves have such a long wavelength that they diffract around the curvature of the Earth. This allows them to be transmitted over very long distances. They diffract over the horizon. Some submarines use extremely low frequency radio waves. This allows the submarine to send and receive signals from anywhere on the planet. Radio waves can also be diffracted as they reflect off the ionosphere. This bounces the signal back to the Earth's surface in a different location. The transmitter in the picture is given off a TV signal of microwaves and a radio signal made up of radio waves. This house has got a receiver and it wants to try and receive the microwaves and the radio waves. However, we have got a very big obstacle in the way. Now, the only signal that the house is picking up are the radio signals. 
Now this is because the radio waves are a longer wavelength than the microwaves which are shown in red and therefore they diffract more around the obstacle. So while this transmitter is sending out both radio and microwaves only the radio waves can reach the house because they are longer wavelength and therefore they can diffract more around the hill. And that brings an end to this revision section on waves through the atmosphere, the ionosphere and diffraction.